I've noticed that when fundamentalists debate either on social media or debate boards, they tend to, when they're losing, either attack, distract, or evade the questions. In this video, I want to talk about each of those elements, some ways you can recognize what the behavior is, what it's meant to do, and then how you can counter it. This information is based off my experience with either religious fundamentalists or creationists. So if you're having a decent exchange with a, a liberal Christ, Christian or a, a person who is like, I'm spiritual but not religious, um, these won't really apply. These are more for the, the kinds of people who are afraid of the answers that your questions are going to get them to reveal. In general, each of these tactics is an attempt to get you off your game. It's an attempt to distract you from a point that you are trying to get them to acknowledge. And that, of course, that, that means that the counter to this is to identify what that core question is from your side. What is the clear question you want them to answer or the point that you want them to clarify and really focus in on that to the exclusion of everything else. I've organized these tactics into three categories, but I'm sure that there are things that I've missed or there might be categories that you can think of that aren't in here. So again, this isn't meant to be definitive, but it is a way for you to identify tactics when you see them coming up in debates. The attack tactic is designed to somehow emotionally provoke you in order to get you off your topic. So they're meant to bait you or find a way to get you um, from thinking rationally into defending yourself or making a, a counter emotional attack or something along those lines. Distraction techniques are used to try to get you off your main point by putting up some irrelevant information or drowning you in, in information from a copy and pasted website. Anything that will get you on a different track of conversation that allows them to then attack you or do other things that, um, you know, to get away from answering that question that you want them to answer. Evasion techniques are used in order to try to avoid giving an answer. So I see um, these evasion techniques, I'll talk a bit, a bit more about them, is answering a question with a correct question. It's a way to step back and get you talking, keep you as the person who's got a, a specific thing that you want to focus on, keep you talking and talking and talking until they can find something else to jump on to try to distract you. Going through these one by one, attack, again, uses emotion to try to get you away from reason. These might be personal attacks, questioning your motivation, attacks on the author that you're writing or citing for some kind of personal basis. So an example is questioning the motives of your interlocutor. So why are you so angry at God is a classic kind of way to get around that. And so you ask a straightforward question and you're accused of not liking Christians or being angry at God or wanting to hurt Christianity. Um, anything that is really directed at you personally is an attack that's meant to get you away from the topic. Another example of attacking is citing a stereotype in order to um, discredit you whether or not you're a member of that group or whether or not the stereotype is true. That stereotype might be that all atheists are angry or, you know, again, getting back to the whole trope about being angry as if, you know, somehow being angry makes your argument less legitimate. Another tactic in terms of the attacking approach is to try to make you or someone else's likability the focus of this discussion and not the actual question that you're trying to get an answer for. for. So again, the whole thing that in terms of my identification when I'm reading a post is if they are attacking me personally or someone else personally or impugning my character or hinting at things, that is an attempt to get me off my intellectual game and onto an emotional one where I'm feeling defensive and writing about defending myself instead of pressing them on the point that they don't want to make. Distraction techniques are anything to try to get you off topic, um, on a different path, anything to avoid giving a direct answer that they know either makes them their religion look bad or, or undermines their religion or somehow damages the sort of credibility of their belief system. Common ways of distracting you is to throw massive sections of text from dubious sources at you going, oh yeah, here's the answer. Changing the subject is another attempt to distract you. They're losing the argument, so they want to redirect it to another subject answer, a subject area before giving you a straight answer. They might be citing irrelevant facts or logic that has no place uh, throwing out phrases about, oh, this is this fallacy or that fallacy, in order again to give, uh, avoid giving a straight answer and to get you discussing about uh, the fact that their fallacy is a fallacy rather than getting them to answer the question. 
They might also engage in things like just, you know, saying that you, um, all facts or theories are, are just opinions. Oh, it's just a theory. And then you have to explain the difference between a theory and speculation or a theory and a hypothesis. And again, that gets them away from answering the question. It gets you talking about something other than the thing that they don't want to talk about. Evasion's a very tricky thing that's almost sometimes hard to notice, but the best way to identify an evasion technique is the person keeps asking questions. So I think it's quite important to have common definitions and common language when you're having a debate with somebody. So if you are having a disagreement and talking about, well, that's just a theory, and my response is, well, theory is a state, statement of interconnected uh, causal links that produce an outcome, that's fine to have. But if they just say, well, what do you mean by causal outcome? And they keep asking questions about your position, this is a way for them to waste time and get you off your game so that they don't have to give the answer that you asked 15 minutes ago and now you've been spending all this time answering their questions instead of them providing a straight and clear direct answer to yours. Don't get distracted. Say, okay, I'm going to answer this thing, but the next, I've answered your question, now you answer mine. And don't allow them to do anything except answer your question, because if you have done them the favor of answering a question, now it's their turn. It's not you answer seven questions and then they redefine the question and give the answer they want. So this would be my advice in terms of really narrowing and pinning people down. Have a simple thing that you keep coming back to. Don't get distracted with personal attacks. Don't, don't get distracted with irrelevant information. Just get a clear answer to this one point, if nothing else. All of these tactics have one thing in common. They're designed to get you off of your main question that has a direct answer you're waiting for because it would make them admit a truth or include a fact that would undermine their position. That's not a good enough reason to not answer a question, by the way. Not liking the answer that you're having to give is not a reason for not answering the question. Here's my advice on how to cope. One, do not take insults seriously. If people start making personal attacks on you, it's because they don't have an intellectual argument to make. Point that out to them. I have a comment somewhere on YouTube about um, Islam being religiously patriarchal and the way that it uh, is really dismissive of women. And I've had Muslim apologists write back to me, starting off with, you fat stupid bitch, blah blah blah. <laughs> like, dude, you've just made the point about the problem with Islam and misogyny. Your opening line to me was to insult me. You are proof of the problem I'm pointing out. You are not defending your religion. So. There's a, I don't want to dismiss um, harassment and serious threats, but my default position is if someone starts off a post like insulting me, it's because they don't have enough of a brain to actually make an argument. And I sometimes tell people that, that um, their little impotent brains are only capable of, you know, throwing insults at me. And if that's all they have, I'm not interested. That's not an intellectual conversation. I'm above that. Two, don't take distraction bait. It might be tempting when people put up distracting stuff to glom onto it and, and to try to engage with it, but all they're doing is moving you off of your main point. So if they put you to a, a link to a website saying, oh, here's refutation of the idea of, I don't know, carbon dating or something, don't say, okay, I'm gonna go read your entire page and then try to explain the thousand things that are wrong with it. Your source, you find the relevant information. So. Give the link back to them and say, tell me which paragraph, which sentence I should be reading, copy and paste it here. How does this directly answer the question that I've asked you? Don't just give me a link to a website. Don't fall for that trap. Three, be willing to define terms and other friendly things to keep a conversation going, but don't just keep answering questions because they're asked. So the fourth point, which maybe should have been the first point, is make sure that you have an idea of what a direct answer to your question would look like. If you're asking somebody a question and you don't have an idea of what the answer is or what the answer could be, then it's going to be harder for you to follow these things. But if you know what the answer to the question is, then it's a lot easier for you to stay focused. Now, one example would be someone would assert that the universe comes from nothing and that's impossible. I would counter argue that if you look at the equation negative three plus positive three equals zero, both sides of the equation are balanced. Negative three and positive three cancel out and are represented by zero. So the idea that you can get something from nothing is impossible is just wrong on its face. And if you think about the positive and negative in terms of energy canceling each other out, then you can start to understand how a universe could look like it came from nothing because of the way that the energy was distributed. 
So getting them to acknowledge it's that negative three plus positive three equals zero shows that something can come from nothing is my point, then that's what I'm going to focus on and want to come back to because it's a very obvious and clear statement. Point five, if they leave pouting, you win. <laughs> Anyone who picks up their marbles and goes home without giving the direct answer have pretty much admitted defeat. Um, so stomping off and taking their marbles and going home and not wanting to play anymore means that you've won. It means that your point could not be refuted or distracted. They couldn't you know, attack you enough to get you off of it. And at the end of the day, rather than give a clear answer that would go against what they want the world to be, they just pick up their marbles and go home. That's technically a win in my book. Ideally, this would not be the only kind of interaction that you have online. It would be nicer, obviously, to have real conversations with people, but some people online aren't interested in having conversations. They just want to try to put forward the same tired arguments over and over again. And when you ask them questions to unpack these tired arguments, either they're going to use the opportunity to think about it or they're not. And if they're not, then there was nothing you could ever do in the first place. So that's why I say, hey, you win. Um, they might go away and think about it, hopefully. Um, but for those people obviously who are interested in a sincere conversation, you might still see some of these, maybe like a perhaps an evasion technique if you're getting into areas. But generally I'd say that if the person seems sympathetic and compassionate and an honest broker, even if you disagree on some fundamental ideas, they're still trying to be honest and upfront with you, then these things really shouldn't come into play. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. This has been my 800 subscriber bonus video that I've done on my channel for my subscribers to say thank you for your support and for sharing my content, for liking it, and for returning every week to watch it. I really appreciate you guys a lot, and this is my little way of showing you. So until next time, I've been Christy. You've been awesome. Please subscribe, please like, please share, and I'll see you later. Bye!